Hello folks, it's Pastor Brandon coming to you live from Salem Springs, Arkansas with another Fishers of Men video broadcast. It is good to be here today, good to be here tonight, and uh, we're going to be continuing on our faith series from Hebrews chapter 11, and we're still going to be, we're still talking about Moses. There we go. Um... <laughs> Last time, uh, we talked about uh, how Moses had um, basically put away his flesh, means meaning that he basically chose to suffer affliction with his people than rather to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. We talked about how um, Moses had killed an Egyptian. And as a matter of fact, we're actually going to backtrack a little bit. Um, we're going to backtrack a little bit. Uh, and, and, and we're going to kind of get into a little bit of a review. But this uh, this broadcast, we're going to be talking about on how he forsook Egypt. Okay? And how he left Egypt. Okay? And after he killed this Egyptian... He fled out of Egypt, okay? And he met with God with by a burning bush, okay? So we're going to be talking about that today. and we're, not, not today. Well, I mean, I guess today, but we're going to be talking about that tonight. Um... And as you know, this broadcast kind of got interrupted a couple times, so please pray for me. Please pray for the broadcast. Please pray that God will have his way and his will. And um, I am going to be doing a couple of videos tonight. So I'm going to be doing this teaching, but then there's going to be kind of another thing that's kind of been on my heart that I wanted to share. Um, I'm going to be doing that in another video uh, tonight, but the, the second video it really is not going to be something I'm just going to post everywhere. So, um, for all you guys on Facebook, stay tuned for that. Okay. But we're going to be, but I'm going to really mainly do one teaching video and I might do another video after this to kind of, you know, I've got some things I want to share and stuff like that. So, <coughs> um, anyways, it's good to be here. Um, Let's see here. Not much going on in the news. I mean, I can't say that. There's actually a lot going on in the news. And it's kind of like, which news is right, right? Like, there you got the fake news. You got the true news. Which news is news? Really, if you really want, if you really want true news, you stick to this Bible. Amen. You stick to the King James Bible. You can't go wrong with that. Um, I will only preach out of the King James and no other perverse version because all the other new age versions are a perversion and they are not the truth okay <clears throat> they are not the truth that's a whole nother message that's a whole nother message for another time but in a nutshell i only preach and teach out of the king james bible and i will only preach and teach out of the king james bible and no other version. Now, there might be cases where I will use other versions to show you and make the make a point from the from the the mouth of the horse how bad those versions are. But I will never preach or teach out of an NIV or anything like that. I will never preach or teach, but I might there might be times where I might actually use those to prove a point. Okay? And the and and usually the point's going to be that the King James Bible is the only word, pure word of God that you can trust. And the other perver all the all all the other perversions are fake. Okay, so I only preach out of the King James Bible. If people want to hate me for that, go right ahead. You can hate me. You can hate me all you want. I I, I can care less. Okay, I, I really can care less if you hate me or like me. But really. <laughs> the flesh side of me wants everybody to like me. But at the same time, you know, 
I'm gonna probably I'm gonna I probably will be hated on because I preach out of the truth. Amen. Um. So let's let's see here. Let's let's begin with prayer requests. Um. Please can please continue. Uh, I know a lot of you are praying for me and my family. So please continue to pray for my family and I. Uh. Pray. Uh, pray. I want you to pray for a fellow sister and um, her mother for strength. Uh, her mother's not doing very well, so please pray for her. If and uh, please pray for our, this fellow sister, uh, she needs prayer as well. Okay. Uh, there's a, bro a fellow brother. Please pray for him and his family, his ex-wife for salvation. Uh, please pray for a fellow sister. Uh, for her for salvation for her father please continue to keep brother Joey in your prayers uh, brother Joey I know you're gonna eventually watch this video so let me just tell you that brother I love you I love you God bless you um, you've really definitely been an encouragement to to me uh, and I hope that I can be an encouragement to you Um Brother, I I love you. I'm I'm, I'm praying I'm praying for you. You you pray for me, um, and uh, pray for Brother Joey because he's got pain and he's got his good days and he's got his bad days. Um, <clears throat> um also I want you to pray for Brother Ryan, uh, Brother Ryan Payton. Okay, Brother Ryan, brother, if you're watching this, if you if you get a chance to watch this too, listen, you know, brother, I love you. You've been a very encouragement, a very much of an encouragement to me, and I hope I can be an encouragement to you. I'm praying for you. I love you. You're my brother in Christ, and um, I care for you. Okay. Uh, pray for Brother Ryan and his and, and and his ministry because he quite often gets attacked by the devil. Because I tell you what, that stinking stupid devil just just doesn't want to leave any of us alone you know he, and by the way the devil doesn't want to leave us alone because he knows his time is short okay so pray for him okay um you know again pray for me uh for my minute for the ministry that god's called me in to um and also that god's will will be done okay um we have a fellow sister uh that actually lives in the UK. I won't mention by name, but sister, if you if you ever do come across this video, um, we'll be praying for you. Please pray for this fellow sister and salvation for her family. Um, and I guess, and, and also there's another sister that her prayer request is, uh, her pr her prayer request is to be you know for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. So please keep please keep them in prayer. Uh, keep me in prayer. Um, we all need prayer, amen. We all need it. Uh, so that's gonna be it for the prayer requests. Um, if you guys have prayer requests, please feel free to to share them, to jot them down. Let me know. Email me. Message me. Whatever you'd like, and I'll put you on my prayer list, and I'll. I'll pray. I'll be. I'll be praying for you. Okay. Um. Let's see here. What else? I think that's gonna be it. So let's go ahead and we're gonna be going into Hebrews, and then we're gonna be getting into Exodus. And um. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews chapter eleven. Hebrews chapter eleven. And we're actually only going to be reading from, from from one verse from there. And then we're going to switch over and I'm going to head over to Exodus and talk. We're going to talk more about that as we read. Okay. Um, Hebrews 11, verse 27. Okay. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Okay, by faith he forsook Egypt. Okay, 
Now, in case if you in case you don't know what Egypt is a type is a, is a, is um um I don't know if it's a type. I think it's more of a picture. Egypt or well, representation. Okay, that's a better word. <coughs> Egypt in a lot of cases is represented as the world. Okay? And if you read that passage of scripture, okay, it would make sense. It would make sense to it would make sense it would make sense that um Moses forsook he forsook he forsook Egypt but he also forsook the world okay what do i mean by that well last last time i touched on on how Moses had crucified his flesh in other words Moses said no to his flesh. He said no to sin. And, um, I'm sorry about that. That This video is cutting in and out, and, and I apologize for that. Please please do keep this video in prayer. It's something that I think the devil is really going to hate. So keep me in prayer and keep this video in prayer. Amen. Um, <clears throat> but we saw, but anyways, getting back to what I was saying is that Moses said no to his flesh. Okay? By doing that, he forsook the world, okay? He forsook Egypt, okay? But another reason why he forsook, forsaked Egypt was because he killed an Egyptian and he hit him in the sand, okay? So, and we're going to get into that. So, at the, so, here we see that Moses forsook the world by saying no to sin and when I say no to sin that doesn't mean he was perfect what it means is is what the Bible says he 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 but you know that by faith he chose to be afflicted with his own people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season okay? So Moses forsook, for a season, he forsook his flesh, okay? He, he said no to sin, but rather um, having to suffer affliction with his own people, okay? Now, turn with me to Exodus. Exodus, okay? Exodus chapter 2, and uh, we're going to start in verse 11. <coughs> it says, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren, and looked on their burdens, and he spied, he spied, on, he spied an Egyptian <coughs> smiting in Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove the, together, and he said to him, That did the wrong. Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee? Uh, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killedest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But, okay, now this is where we're going to get into how Moses forsook Egypt. Okay? But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh. And dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters. And they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and wanted their flock. 
and water their flock. And when they came to Rael, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and also drew water enough for us and water the flock. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? And why is it that ye have left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zipporah, his daughter. And she bare him a son, and called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and they cry, their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Okay, now listen. Here's what happened. Moses saw an Egyptian smiting and afflicting one of his brethren. Moses went and killed that Egyptian. Okay, that's murder. Okay, he murdered an Egyptian. Okay, Moses then hid the Egyptian in the sand. Okay, news got out to the Hebrews that Moses had killed this Egyptian and eventually that news reached on to Pharaoh and Pharaoh wanted to have Moses killed. Okay, so what did Moses do? Moses forsook Egypt. He fled out of Egypt. Okay, he left Egypt onto Midian. Okay, there he stayed in Midian and we see that he was given a wife and she bore she bare him a son okay but and then we find out and see that while Moses is in Midian <coughs> Pharaoh king of Egypt died and the Israelites cried unto God, and God heard them and remembered Abraham, the covenant between Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. Okay? So, what we see, and here's what we're going to, okay, so let's start, let's start in, in chapter 3, verse 1. Okay? Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Okay? Moses kept the flock. You know what that is? Moses was a shepherd. This is a type and picture. Moses is a type and picture of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Moses, it says that Moses kept the flock. You know who keeps flocks? A shepherd. Moses was a shepherd. Okay? He was a shepherd man, okay? He shepherded the flock. He kept the flock. Jesus Christ is our shepherd. We are the sheep. And if you're watching this today and you're born again, you are part of that. You're part of that flock. <clears throat> Amen. Jesus Christ is the ultimate shepherd and Moses is a type and picture of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because Moses was a deliverer who delivered um, who de- who delivered Israel out of Egypt. But Moses, check this out now. Moses was the mediator between Israel and God. You know who our mediator is? Jesus Christ. Amen. Hang on a second. I'm gonna, I, I just want to take a look at something real quick. Let's see. Mediator. 
mediator. Is that right? Is that how you spell it? Ooh, okay. Buckle your seatbelts, guys. Check this out. This is amazing. In the Peer Bible Search software, okay, when you type in mediator, it is found exactly seven times in the King James Bible. Seven is a number for perfection, but seven is usually associated with whom? God. You know who Jesus Christ is? Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Jesus Christ is the mediator between us and God. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Seven times me mediator is found in the King James Bible. That's amazing. Um, let's take a look at this one here. Um, let's see here. Galatians 3.19 Wherefore then serveth the law, it was added because of transgression, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Okay, Galatians chapter three verse twenty. Now a mediator is not a me a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. First Timothy two five. Christ Jesus. You guys, mediator is seven times in your King James Bible. Okay? Jesus Christ is the mediator. And Moses was the mediator between Israel and God. Isn't that amazing? Moses is a picture of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Why? Cuz he is he is Moses was the mediator. He was the deliverer and he was a shepherd because it says that Moses now Moses kept the flock of Jethro his father-in-law only a shepherd is the a shepherd is a, is the one who keeps the flock so we see clearly that Moses is a type and picture of Jesus Christ wow is is isn't that amazing that's amazing that's even really cool how Mediator is mentioned seven times in the King James Bible. That's amazing. I didn't even realize that. That's pretty cool. Um, but anyways, continuing on. Okay. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priests of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared... Onto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked. I'm sorry it's cutting out again, in and out again. Please forgive me. I don't know why it is, but the devil must the devil must be hating this, okay? But I'm gonna continue pushing on. But let me ask you a question. When was the first time God met with Moses? Egypt is a picture of the world. So Moses forsook the world. He said no to the world. You know what happened <clears throat> after that? He met with God in a, in a burning bush, didn't he? Now let me ask you a question. Um... Oh, just I slipped my mind. Uh, but you see that God wants us when God see God when God calls us. Okay, when He meets with us, He wants us to be out of the world. Okay, think of this. Okay, 
Out of Egypt, I've called my son. Okay, out of Egypt, I've called my son. Let's see here. I want to fit. Let's see. What is that? Egypt. I can't. Why is this acting so weird? There we go. Egypt. Oh, that's a mind. That's that's a mind blower. Egypt is mentioned six hundred and eleven times. Um, out of Egypt, I've called my son. I gotta find that. Let's see here. I cannot find it. Hmm. I think it's in Micah. Maybe not. Anyways, <clears throat> out of Egypt, I've called my son. Okay. When you think about what God, if you think about what God did for Moses, okay, Mo, by faith, Moses forsook Egypt. God was calling Moses out of the world. You know what that means? It means that Moses was not part of the world. Moses was, you know, Moses, you know, Moses, Moses was separate from the world, wasn't he? We should all be separate from the world. And by the way, Moses demonstrated that by saying no to sin for a season and to suffer affliction with his people. Moses by faith, Moses forsook Egypt. God called him out of the world. And God used him to do a... And when I say called him out of the world, I don't mean that he was translated out. That's not what I mean. What I mean was, was that God had separated Moses away from the world so that Moses, so that God can use Moses to do a great and mighty work. Amen. <clears throat> so keep that in mind. After he forsook Egypt and forsook the world, okay, um, Moses met with God in a burning bush. Okay. Verse 3. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why this bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, see, God called on to him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw, draw not nigh hither, put up thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place where whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster, taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. I want to stop right there, right there for a second. That's encouraging to know. Have you ever had a time when you've been through some, some troubled times... <clears throat> You've been through trials. And sometimes you kind of feel as if, does God really know how about my pain? The answer to that is yes, God knows your pain. He knows what you're going through. 
And the reason for that is because, well, number one, God is God. He knows from the beginning and the end. He knows everything about you. He knows everything you're going to go through. But God knows the, the, the trials that you're going through. He knows. And God is using that for an intended purpose. Take a look at Job's life. He went through... Boy, I, you can't, I can't even wrap my head around what he went through. Okay? But here, it says that, that God knew the affliction of Israel. He knows their affliction. Let me tell you something. God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He knows your afflictions. He knows what you're going through. Amen. He knows. And the fact that he knows can be a comfort to us. Because to me, as a believer, knowing that God knows what I'm going through... You know, I know that he hasn't left nor forsake, nor for, he didn't leave or forsake me. Did God forsake his people? No. God didn't forsake his people. God loves them. He loves us. Amen. Let's continue on. <clears throat> And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land and unto a good land and a large on, and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come on me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. You see, God had a purpose and plan for Moses. By faith, Moses was head. By faith, Moses chose to suffer affliction with his people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt. By faith. Okay? By faith. And the reason why Pharaoh wanted all these all these men children to die okay because satan knew god was going to raise up a, a a redeemer or a deliverer to save israel out of the hand of the egyptians okay satan knew and he and he didn't want it to happen so he tried to put a stop to it by having these baby boys killed you know what's really interesting? We take a look at what's going on, on in, our, in our nation. With all this abortion. Satan is having all these innocent babies killed. And destroyed. Let me tell you something about those innocent babies that are aborted. All those abortions that have taken place in this nation. All those babies are now in heaven. You know why? Because David, when he had a son, when, when, when his son died, he stopped mourning. You know why? Because David said, he can't come to me, but I'll go to him. And David is in heaven. See, David knew that he would eventually see his son again in heaven. 
that's how I know that all these aborted babies are now in heaven. Okay? And Pharaoh had wiped out all these men children because he was Satan because Satan knew of God's plan and Satan was trying to put a stop to put a stop to try to not have Moses to uh, be raised up. In other words, Satan was trying to prevent the he was trying to prevent the coming of Moses. Now you gotta keep in mind, Moses was just human. Okay, Moses is not God. Okay, Moses had a flesh. He had a sin nature. But God was going to use Moses in such a mighty way. We just read it. God was going to use him to, to redeem and bring Israel out of Egypt. Amen. And God had a very, God, I mean, God had a big calling for Moses. And God used Moses in a mighty way. And keep in mind, okay, Moses murdered an Egyptian. And yet God used him in a mighty way. Am I, now... Don't take what I just said as you can sin all you want and, and, and have God still use you, okay? That's not a license to sin. What I'm saying is, you might think you might be the most wretched person on the face of the earth. But that doesn't mean that God still can't use you. That doesn't mean that God can't use you. He He can Okay, he can and he will. Amen. Now, verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I've sent thee when thou hast bring, brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, and, and Moses said unto God behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say, and shall say on and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus, thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shall thou say unto the Unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together, and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and Isaac, and of Jacob appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you out of this affliction of Egypt onto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites onto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they, sh and they shall hearken to thy voice. And thou, shalt, and thou shalt come now and the elders of Israel unto the king of Egypt. And ye shall say unto him, the Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, and now let us go. We beseech thee three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our, to the Lord our God. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with my, one, with my wonders, and which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that he will let you go, and I will give this people 
favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when ye shall go, when ye go, ye shall not go empty, but every woman shall borrow of her neighbor, and of her that sojourneth in her house, jewels of s silver, jewels of gold and raiment, and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. Amen. Now, <clears throat> we see that God is telling God is telling Moses, okay, I want you to go before I want you to, I want you to go before Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Okay? But God said he was going to bring upon wonders and they were going to spoil the Egyptians. Okay? This would be the fulfillment of what is written. Let's go back here for a second. Let's go to let's go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 50. Okay? And um, let's see here. Okay, let's go on verse 24. Okay, Genesis 50 verse 24. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he sware to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from thence. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Okay? Now. Okay, now listen. We see that God is telling Moses that I'm I have I'm visiting my people and I'm going to bring them out. And therefore, God was going to use Moses to bring him out. God was going to bring God was going to use Moses to bring Israel out of Egypt. Which would be which would be a fulfillment of what Joseph had prophesied to his kids. Before he died. Amen. Now listen. I am. Um, I, I know it's a very short message. Okay. It was a very short message. But listen. Um, we see that. As we're starting to. Um, you know. God used ordinary men. To do extraordinary things. Okay, I mean, pun not intended, but God used your average Joe to do some pretty extraordinary things. He used, God used sinful people. He used the foolish to confound the wise, didn't he? God is not looking for a right, he's not looking for a righteous person. Okay. Hang on a second. Um Let's see. I want us to go Let's see. Where is it? Um can't find it um but here's the thing um the book jesus says that he's not called he's not come to call the righteous okay but sinners to repentance uh hang on a second i gotta first find it um hello sister good to have you god bless you um Okay. 
uh, Matthew 9, 13. Okay. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay. When Jesus... Heard, okay, Mark 2, 17. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And Luke 5, 32. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Let me tell you something. God took sinners. Okay? God took sinners, and those sinners repented. And God used those sinners to do extraordinary things. Moses was a murderer. He murdered an Egyptian. Yet God used Moses to be many things. Okay? He used him, God used Moses as a deliverer to deliver Israel out of Egypt. God used Moses as a mediator between Israel and, and God. And God used Moses to bring about the Ten Commandments. Which, if you all tune in to Pastor Brennan Live, okay, tomorrow, if the Lord willing, I'm going to be getting into my series, The Ten Commandments. I'm going to be getting into the First Commandment. Okay, so pray for me on that. Pray that God will have his way and his will. The purpose as to why I'm going to be getting into it is to show that you can't keep the law. Okay? You can't keep the law. But the purpose of it also is to show you that you can't keep the law, but that you need a Savior. There's only one who actually kept the whole law. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. That is Jesus Christ. Um, so, we see that God used sinners to do remarkable things. And I'm going to tell you something. It's really interesting that how you have all these, these sinful, these men who are like great men of God but had a sin nature and struggled with sin, and yet they made a huge impact. If you're watching this and you're born again and, and you feel like God can't use you because of your sin, let me tell you why you're wrong. You're wrong because knowing that you have a sin issue well, number one, the fact that you feel guilty about certain things is a good sign. If you didn't feel guilty, then we got issues, okay? But number two is that, yes, you fall short. The Bible says, if we confess our sin, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Just because you are born again does not mean that you're sin free. It means that you're that doesn't mean that you don't ever sin again. Okay. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt. He forsook the world by saying no to sin. And it's interesting that when you take a look at what happened after Moses forsook Egypt. He met with God, didn't he? God is calling you out of this world. He's calling you out. And what, what do I mean by that? He, I'm not talking about being translated. What I'm talking about is God is wanting you to be separate from this world. And that's exactly what Moses did. Think about that. Moses actually saw the back parts of God. He actually saw God's spine. Amen. And if you're here to, if you're here tonight 
and you don't know the Lord is your Savior, you can know for sure that today, that today, that if, if you, it, that you can know for sure that if you were to die today, you can go to heaven. Okay. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is who you says he is and that God raised him from the dead on the third day, you'll be saved. And all you need to do is sincerely go before him, before the Lord Jesus Christ. Admit that you are a sinner. Repent of your sins. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to cleanse you and to wash you from your sins. Ask him into your heart and life. And ask him to fill you with his spirit. When you do that, you surrender your life to him. And by doing that, you're putting your faith and trust in what he did for you and not in your own works. Amen. Listen, I don't want you guys taking my word for things, okay? And I have to apologize. This video kept on going in and out, okay? How do you be separate? Uh, is, that, are you, are, is, that, is that, are you talking about the world? How you be separate of the, how you separate yourselves from the world? If that's the question that you're asking, sister, let me um, see if I can maybe explain this in a better way. Okay. To be separate from the world is to not, we, we really, to be separate from the world we are to, first of all, we're crucifying the flesh and the desires thereof. Okay? Because the lusts, the lusts of the flesh tend to creep up and we need to crucify the flesh daily. We need to die daily. But we also need to make sure that in all things that we do, that we don't get worldly let me give you an example. You take a look at these mega churches. Do you really think that they're Holy Ghost spirit feel spirit filled churches? No. You know why? Because instead of being instead of influence, influencing the world, the world has influenced them. God calls us to be a separate and peculiar people. And what that means is we need to make sure that we do not let the world try to influence us. We're not to and we shouldn't indulge ourselves in sin and and worldly lusts. Just like Moses, okay? Moses rather suffer the affliction with, with his people than to enjoy sin for a season. Let me tell you something. Our life is as, is as a vapor. That means we're here for a short time. We're here for a season, aren't we? We should say, yes to the spirit and no to the flesh because by by giving in to the flesh and the desires you're not separating yourself from the world and I'm going to tell you something born again Christians are susceptible to that I'm not perfect okay I'm just as susceptible as that as the next person we need to make sure that we are to be, we need to separate ourselves. And to do that, we need to make a difference in the world by preaching the gospel. Being a light in this world. Let your light so shine before men. Amen. That's how you be separate. Sister, did I answer that question? I, I hope that I did. Um, does that did, did, I, did I answer your question and, and also did that make sense I, I don't want to make I don't want to 
I don't want to get conf I don't want to bring confusion or anything like that. So, um, but here's the thing: I don't want you taking my word for things. Okay, I want you to take what I say, and I want you to match it with this Bible. If what I say does not match with what this Bible says, let God be true and Brandon a liar. Okay? Let God be true and every man a liar. Okay? If I'm wrong, then the Lord will deal with me as he will. But if I am right... then let him show you. And I'm going to tell you something. If I'm wrong, God is going to deal with me. I mean, eventually, I'm going to have to give an account as to everything I said and did in this body, whether good or bad. And that's going to be either a loss or a gain of rewards. Because that's for a believer. For a non-believer, it's going to be... For a non-believer, let me tell you something. For a non-believer... One of these days, when you're going to have to stand, I mean, at some point, you will stand before a great white throne judgment. And the only thing that's, the and, and by the way, there's, there's no second chances at the great white throne. You will be pronounced guilty and you will be tossed into hell in the lake of fire for all eternity. But like I said, you can know for sure that you're going to heaven. Okay, today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. Amen. Listen, um, I have to apologize. This video kept on getting, cutting in and out. Um, amen, sister. Jesus saves. He does. Okay. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? But I have to apologize that this, this video kept on cutting in and out. Devil the devil probably didn't like it very well. Okay? Trying to mess me up. And, um... That's, I mean, I'll tell you what. The devil just seems to be messing everybody up. Okay? Now, I'm going to play him real quick. And then I'm gonna close. I'm gonna close the video here. Okay, um, hang on a second. It's 37 seconds long. It's not a very lengthy hymn. It's just like a verse of of, of a hymnal. So I'm, I'm gonna play this, and I want you guys to think on what I said. Okay, I want you to think about what I what 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 was said, and I want you to think about what God's word says. Amen. And if the Holy Spirit is knocking on your heart. I want you guys to take this time and even after the video to take some time before the Lord and, and get it right. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, if He's knocking on, on your heart today, please, I, I pray that you please be obedient to that. Okay? Please be obedient to that. Here, here's the hymn. Amen. We'll, we'll go ahead. <clears throat> I want this to be a blessing to you. Amen. I, I, but the thing is, I want this to be a blessing, but I have to speak the truth as it is. Amen. Um, so anyways, um, that's all I had for tonight. Actually, not necessarily. Okay. Um, for those of you on Facebook who are watching and will be watching, I'm going to be doing another video immediately after this. Just some things on my heart that I want to share. And I want to kind of keep that separate from this video. So if you guys can actually, if you guys want to tune in to that, um, please feel free to do so. 
I don't normally do a back-to-back -back video, but there's just some things I just I want to just share with you guys, okay? So, uh, but anyways, uh, with that said, um, listen, I love you guys. Um, stay tuned for tomorrow. The good Lord willing, we're gonna start on the we're gonna start on our Ten Commandments series. Actually, we've already started it, but we're gonna be getting into part two and getting into the first commandment tomorrow. Okay, uh, so pray for me on that. Um, pray that God will have His way and will. Amen. And uh, keep me in prayer. Keep my family in prayer. Please keep. Um, uh, we got like I said, we got a fellow sister who who needs prayer um, for her and her mother. Her mother. It's not doing very well the last time I, I've heard anyways. Uh, so please pray for her and, and her mother. Uh, please pray for strength for her. Um, and uh, so just continue to uh, pray for Brother Joey and Brother Ryan and, and, and all these other saints of God, saints in God, you know, amen. So please, please uh, pray for them and, and um, let's, let, let's, we need to lift each other up in prayer, amen. Uh, but anyways, listen, I love you guys. God bless you. And uh, if the Lord willing, we will see you tomorrow. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.